Uh, what is true love to me? Um, here are some of the virtues, but what is true love to me? The true love here is actually, I did not discover real true love until I went into this career. And also, one and a half to two years ago, my mom passed away. And she passed away at the age of 94. 94. Now, I, in, in, when I was growing up, I never thought I loved her. Because, you know why? Because there was not enough of money or food to go around. She was frustrated. So, what we get is a lot of hitting and beating and hitting and beating. So, I, did, I grew up not really loving her much. But when, she, when I grew up, I understand the meaning of love. And for 15 years, she was bedridden. I remember taking her out because she, though she is bedridden, she loves to go out. She's a very active woman, you know. She loves to go out. And every time I promised her that I will take you out, whenever I close a case, I will promise myself that I will take her out. So there was one day I took her out to Pavilion. And I can tell you when there's love, for people, for something, for someone that you believe in, you have strength. And for someone like a size like mine, I could carry my mother from the car right into the wheelchair many a times. But there was one time I failed. I f she fell onto the floor. This is what I mean by when there is love, anything you can conquer when there is love. And I also tell you that during the time the three months to, to eight months, uh, I was nursing her. I was, making, I was actually picking up all the bird's nests and, and doing on a regular basis to give her the bird's nests. You know, even despite my eyesight was not so good. So that is love. That's what I mean by love. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how much deeper I can go into, but I can tell you now, I look back, I really truly love her. Because deep inside, that missing link is still there. You know, that missing link. That what is my true love in my profession? I want to show you this. In whatever we do, we know there's, there's the Creator up there. There's God up there. He truly loves us. And it's through Him that we are inspired, that we have the power. We have the power in us. And now I'm transforming that love ever since when I could see the power of insurance to provide food and every, everything to your loved ones. Because when I see that, I want to transform it from passion to profession. And here we are talking about our clients. Our clients are our passion. They are truly our passion. When there is love, there is excitement, there is enthusiasm, and there is desire, there is energy. But I want to tell you, these are not what I want to present to you. Even the power of love, you know, that is sung by Celine Dion, that is so impactful, you know. But this is not what I want to speak to you all about. I want to show you all some of the things that I believe in in my business. I, I, I want to tell you this. Why my conviction for this business has grown from love to passion is because when I see what I'm doing uh, is able to help a lot of families out there, I begin to see that my love transformed into passion. And I want to do that. I want to take care of families because you know, actually, there was this story, it's a real story of Ben. Ben and Veron. Ben, when he, he was working together with me in advertising, and Ben bought a policy from me, which I gave him critical illness and everything. And Ben got five years down the road, Ben has uh, cancer, throat cancer. And he was going through cancer treatment and everything. I remember the, the drug that he, he, he took, took was... Taxol. And Taxol costs about Singapore $1,000 per jab and he needs to go through a lot of jabs. And what happened is, he told me that the claims that I gave, I gave to him, which is 200000 was not enough. But of course, the life policy has got upon death as well. Huh? When he passed on, I saw his last breath. You know? When he passed on, his wife, I went to his house, I went to her house. The door, I was inside discussing with her on how to use the money and everything and don't simply use it on the wrong thing because there are three children involved, Doremi. The youngest is just one year old. I could see the magic of insurance. When I was delivering her the check, the check of 250000 the wife the, at the door entrance, the, the gate there, the bell was ringing and ringing and ringing. And I said, why don't you answer the, the bell? No, 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 no. I can't do that. I said, why? He says, 
the banker is there. The banker, they, 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 they want money from me. So it is at that point that I realized I have secured the home for them. I have secured the home for them. And it's because of that conviction. Therefore, it's slowly transforming my belief in this business. See, the insurance policy is a promise of love. And I can tell you this, there are many, many ways that we are talking about love. Love makes the world go round. When I came in the business, I didn't think that it was just money. It was not the money that I was going for. It was what insurance could do to the loved ones. And that was my strong belief, you know. In insurance, you must find out the love from people. Who do they truly love? Because when there is no love, there is no business for you and me. We know it. We all know it. And I want to show, share with you one of the story about this guy called Stephen. One day, I was in his office. Actually, I didn't go to the office. It's a law firm. I didn't go there to see him. I went there to see another guy. It's a much older guy. But the guy says, you can't sell me anything because I've got diabetes. I've got heart transplant. I said, okay, can you find me someone in your office that doesn't have this too? Then he said, okay, you go and see Stephen. I said, can you introduce me to Stephen? He said, yes, you go and see Stephen. So I went to see Stephen, and uh, Stephen, as usual, you insurance, ah? Hi, uh, I'm up to my neck already. Uh. You don't talk to me about insurance. You can never sell me anything. I'm up to my neck. So I look at Stephen. As usual, I always have a lot of body language, you know? So I, I told Stephen, I, because he has all the files and I'm so short, and by, by the time I get seated on the chair, he is not able to see me with all the files on the table. So I sat on the, you know, the, the, the chair has got that uh, armrest. I sat on the armrest, you know. I said, Stephen, I want to tell you this. I'm not interested in anything that is the neck and below. I'm only interested from here, from your neck above to your eyes. Let me just cover that part there, all right? <laughs> So said, nah, enough, I, got, I don't have money to pay already. If I find you the money, would you pay? All right, then I say, Stephen, look, Stephen, that certificate on the wall that you had, the LLB, I said, that's fantastic. How much do you think it cost you? He says, I don't know. My parents pay for it. I say, it's going to cost you a lot more and it's going to cost your family. You name the figure. You know? So he says, no, 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 you're trying to sell me insurance again. I say, no, I'm not trying to sell you insurance. But... I said, Stephen, what is the biggest asset that you've ever owned? And Stephen comes around and tells me, there, there, the photo of the beautiful wife. That is the biggest asset. Just now I told you, you find the love in the prospect, you'll find the business. And then I closed him. One minute he says, no, I'm not going to buy today. But next minute he says, where's the sign? See? So that is the power of love. That is the power of love. You bring out the love in the people. Yeah? And I use a lot of animation too. I met this old man by the name of Wilson. And he told me, he says, you cannot send me any in insurance. You want to come out? I introduce you friends, but you don't talk about insurance. Okay, can. You know, those days I was young and beautiful. The people also want to invite me out. Like, huh? So, okay, when now? When? For makan, for lunch and everything. And then he told me, he says, um, don't talk about insurance. Ah? Sure, sure, sure. We don't talk. Then after that, we go karaoke, you know. After go karaoke, then after that, he said, okay. Uh, we don't talk insurance. Ah? Okay, don't talk insurance. Then uh, I say, okay, we talk about life. Lah. We don't talk about insurance. We talk about life. Lah. Life also got insurance at the back, you know. <laughs> so we talk about life. So he said, okay, you talk about life. I say, uh, have you ever seen uh, when a baby is born, uh, the hands are like that tight? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're born, they're always like that one. I said, but when people die, normally it's like that. Right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But have you seen uh, people who die also like that? You know? He said, God, me? I said, God. He said, how come God one? I said, yeah, those people who never buy enough insurance, they sure like that one. <laughs> you know? So, uh, he bought. Because he said, go and see my wife. If my wife agree, I buy. And I sold him at that time. Uh, 20, 28 years ago, uh, the, the premium of 19000 is a big deal. I say, show them how much you care and how much they mean to your loved ones. Show them how your products can solve their concerns and problems. You know, as Seven Habits, Stephen Covey also has said, turn your objections to, to objectives. Uh. 
and he says, uh, uh, just now I touched on all those stories already. I'd like to sh share another story with you. This little Emily. You see, a lot of agents are learning so many skills and so many ways of approaching. Uh, but many has dare not demonstrated. But I dare. I dare to demonstrate. There was one couple, they are not that young. They are quite young. Not that young, they're quite young. Huh? <laughs> I'm not talking, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. They were in the region of the men. years old and the wife is about 35. So I went to the family, the house is in Tamantun. And I actually proposed them about uh, 300,000 in those early years. And uh, the husband finally said, we are not interested at this moment. You, you know? So they walked me to the door. They, sh they were showing me to the door, you know, along the walkway to the door. There is one a little cupboard there where they put all the family photos and everything. Then I saw a picture of a little girl and I spoke to Emily. I said, little Emily, I want to tell you that tonight I came to represent you. I talked to your family, I talked to your mum and pops about protection for you, about food and education for you. I failed you. I'm so sorry I failed you. And immediately, the man told me, how much are you talking about just now? So I said, how much do you want to provide little Emily? I closed the case. <laughs>